right. Hopefully you're not tired of hearing my voice by now. Um, but the, the committee have very kindly allowed me to sneak in a small bit about another project I've been involved with, with a local project here in Dundee. It seems appropriate to talk about this. This is the Dundee House, which many of you, of course, know. An extraordinary site, a uh, historic graveyard, right here in the heart of uh, Dundee City. And the project I've been working with on is with the Dundee Health Conservation Group, a brilliant uh, community heritage team there who have been working away for several years now developing investigations of this site and recording. And they called me in with a colleague, Alex Berkelso from Atlas Geophysical, to record the site. Uh, here it is. It has an extraordinary collection of gravestones and monuments uh, dating from the 16th century all the way up to the early uh, 20th century in cases, although in the 19th century graves uh, stopped being dig uh, dug there, essentially. Um, and our job was, believe it or not, to record every single one of these with GPS equipment. And that hadn't really been done since the 19th century. Um, here's some of the examples. Beautiful table tombs that you can see there. And here we are in action. We use some pretty high-tech equipment. This is a, a robotic uh, GPS total station, and it follows you around as you, you survey, and then we use control points with uh, GPS satellite information. Uh, and here's some of our team in action, and some of them misbehaving. Um, we had a lot of fun. Over a thousand gravestones are recorded, um, and also pro forma noting each and every one of them, all of their codes, and linking them into a fantastic survey done by uh, Mr. Drawn in the uh, 19th century, who had recorded all the inscriptions. And we had lots of fun discovering just how inaccurate some of his records were, and how extraordinary some of them were as well. And also trying to find them, because they, it's been, as you can imagine, a lot of the monuments have been reorganized and moved around over the years. <coughs> and here's some of the team in action particularly the chair, Simon Golding, who's just over here. Oops, there we are. <coughs> Can you see that? It's not very clear today. This is a draft outline of what we've produced. So every single one of these relates to a monument. And at the moment, the team are putting this online and linking it into all the individual stone records they have made and all the photography. So believe it or not, you will be able to go to their website, click on any individual one and search by surnames, find out your ancestors' monument. And everyone over the whole world will be able to do this. So it's quite exciting. Um, I've done a few graveyard surveys, but this is the first one I've tried this with. So it's a bit of a one to start with. Um, so it's been fantastic though, we're really happy with what we've produced. In addition to that, with the short time I have to explain this to you, we did make quite an interesting and significant discovery whilst looking at every stone in the graveyard. And one of them was this, and we believe it's a medieval coped grave marker, previously unrecognised one, because it's been reused as a later monument. Um, and that makes sense because the graveyard was created uh, by Mary Queen of Scots in 1564 um, as a graveyard for the borough um, out of Greyfriars Friary. And we know that the Crawford family had a burial site there. And when in the 19th century the inscription on this stone was recorded, it stated that a Lindsay, uh, David Lindsay, of Ezo, who was of the lineage of the Crawfords, uh, had marked the stone for his wife. Uh, so that was particularly significant. So we are currently uh, researching this stone and trying to find out much as we can about him. If it is the David Lindsay we think it is, he was present um, at the inauguration of the king, um, King Charles II, we believe, um, and the date on it of his wife's burial was 1603. So it's particularly a uh, significant chap uh, to, to look into. And we've just got some funding confirmed from the Common Good Fund as well. Um, and we're hoping now to excavate around this stone and to see if we can conserve it and compare it with the other classic examples in St Mary's Tower as well. So I do suggest you keep an eye on their Facebook page. And here's some other examples with some of the inscription visible at the bottom. And it's a hidden gem as well, and rightly so, I think. Only really Grey Friars in Edinburgh has a collection comparable to the historic remains in, in the house. 
um, and do keep an eye on their, their website. And here they are, they're a lovely bunch, if you do want to join in with them, they're slightly, slightly mad, some of them as you can see, um, but they're, they're a great team to work with and we had lots of fun doing it. Um, the final thing I'm going to tell you about that Moira very kindly allowed me to see is something that Moira has been helping me with as well, and she's chairing, so she's asked me to talk about this. Is we've got proposal folks for a Fife Heritage Network, and we've been working with a lot of groups recently in this special year to hold meetings to discuss ways in which we can link up uh, with heritage groups across the area. Uh, some proposals have included creating a, uh, a dedicated web resource that we can share information and the like. Uh, if you are interested in this, if you are involved in Fife Heritage, we want to hear from you, uh, not just myself, as I say, TAFAC is helping support this and a lot of other groups as well. Here are some of the guys who have been involved. Um, this is moving swiftly on from the house, of course. This is in a different area. So if you wish to get involved, we are in discussions. Nothing has been decided. We are looking at ways to make connections and do fantastic projects. Um, do come along. We are about to hold a meeting. Uh, we've just got wonderful confirmation from the New Historical Society who have agreed to host us at the end of this month. If you want to come along, as I say, this is a positive thing. It's all about creating networks and sharing information and also working with national bodies. Uh, so you don't get, you don't ask. Do come along, folks. Uh, just email me or talk to Moira um, and we'll go from there. But I think that's quite enough for me. Um, do hopefully just ask me questions if you have it. Thank you.